Hello everyone and welcome to the Retro Seller, where today we're going to be taking a look at a relatively obscure video game console that was released back in 2006, that being this, which is the Mattel Hyperscan. Some of you might remember a while back I did a video on another obscure console called the Ouya, which might be a little bit more well known than this system mostly due to its record-breaking Kickstarter campaign, but due to a comedy of errors, that system eventually fizzled out. Uh, so we're going to do something similar uh, with this system like we did with that. I'll put together this little package on the history of it. But what I want to say about it before is this had a novel concept. It was a CD-based system that had a unique built-in RFID scanner that you used these collectible game cards that you purchased separately that when you scan them into the system uh, could enhance the gameplay of whatever games you have. Uh, it was interesting, but the execution may be a little bit uh, lacking. So before we talk about this any further, let's take a look at that little video I put together on the history of the Mattel Hyperscan. game system, including the X-Men game. It's where collectible card games meet video games. Scan your character into the game. Battle. Rescan. Your card is now more powerful for your next battle. Over a hundred cards you can collect for even more power. Hyperscan, interactive game system with one controller and X-Men game pack. Other games and booster packs, each sold separately. Rated E10 plus to team. And available now, new Ben 10 game. Hyperscan Gamer. The Mattel Hyperscan is a notable, yet largely forgotten part of gaming history. Launched in October of 2006, this gaming console was a unique venture by Mattel a company more commonly associated with toys like Barbie and Hot Wheels rather than video games. The Hyperscan was marketed towards a younger audience and featured a combination of traditional video gameplay and collectible card scanning technology. The Hyperscan's primary innovation was its use of RFID technology to scan collectible cards, which could then be used to affect gameplay. This concept aimed to merge the physical and digital worlds, leveraging the collectible card trend that was popular among children in the early 2000s. Players would scan character cards into the console to activate characters and abilities in the games. The system itself was relatively inexpensive, retailing at around $70, which included two controllers and a pack of cards. The console's hardware was relatively basic it used a 32-bit Sun Plus SPG290 SOC processor, which was not particularly powerful, even by 2006 standards. Games were stored on standard CD-ROMs, which limited the console's graphics and processing capabilities compared to competitors like the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. The Hyperscan's controller was designed to be simple and kid-friendly, but this simplicity also contributed to its lack of appeal to more advanced gamers. The Hyperscan launched with five titles, X-Men, Interstellar Wrestling League, Ben 10, Marvel Heroes, and Spider-Man. Each game required players to use the collectible cards to progress, which added a physical element to the gaming experience, but also made the games less accessible to those who did not want to invest in multiple card packs. The titles were based on popular franchises, but the games themselves were criticized for their poor graphics, repetitive gameplay, and lack of depth. The Hyperscan was not well received by the market. Sales were poor, and critics panned the console for its underwhelming performance and limited game library. The reliance on collectible cards, while innovative, was seen as a gimmick rather than a compelling reason to purchase the system. By 2007, Mattel had effectively discontinued the Hyperscan 
making it one of the shortest lived gaming consoles in history. Despite its failure, the Hyperscan is an interesting case study in the gaming industry. It attempted to innovate by combining physical and digital play, a concept that would later be more successfully realized by products like Skylanders and the Nintendo Amiibo, as well as Disney Infinity. In many ways, the Hyperscan was ahead of its time, but its execution left much to be desired. Today, the Mattel Hyperscan is a collector's item and a curiosity for those interested in the history of video games. It also serves as a reminder of the challenges and risks inherent in attempting to innovate within the competitive gaming market. Okay, well that's that. Um, so to go a little bit further on this system uh, before we take a look at it, uh, when this was released in 2006, it was sold for $69.99. Uh, but due to everything that's wrong with this system and the development of it, it was discontinued a short time later in 2007. It only sold 30,000 units. And it was competing with systems at the same time, like the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox 360. So this really didn't stand a chance against that. And I guess that's why they were sort of aiming at a, a younger demographic, but it failed miserably. Um, so let's look at the specs of it. As I uh, mentioned in short in the video, this thing is rocking a Sun Plus SPG 290 at 108 megahertz. It has 60 megabytes of DDR RAM, has 640 by 480 resolution. And as I said, it has this little RFID scanner, which was unique at the time. And as I mentioned, the five games that were released with it, that being the X-Men, Marvel superheroes, Spider-Man, Ben 10, there were actually two more games in development for it. Uh, one was Avatar, The Last Airbender, and Nick Extreme Sports. But those were obviously canceled and never released due to the failure of the system. So I think we covered all we can say in advance of looking at it. So how about we take a look around the system and its controllers and the cards that uh, you scan, and we'll see if this is something that you want to add to your obscure video game collection. Probably not. Here's our closer look at the Mattel Hyperscan. But before we really take a look at the build quality of it, it's probably fair to mention that through the course of my research into this console, apparently through several reviews, this is on the list of being one of the, if not the worst video game console ever made. Uh, to be fair, you can't compare it to some of the steaming piles of crap that say, uh, at games have made, like their Atari and Genesis flashback things, or some of the uh, uh, My Arcade devices that uh, they put out, uh, because those were basically emulation consoles that are using uh, retro games that they've licensed and whatnot. This being uh, uh, developed by uh, Mattel, whose only previous experience with video games was the Intellivision. Uh, so they, they were a major player, and they made this specifically, got the license for the games to put it out as its company's entry into the video game market of that time. Just thought I'd point that out, and we'll see if it is deserving of being on the list of the worst video games ever made. Here's a look at the, what I assume is the front of the console. And all you have here are the two controller ports and the power button. And on the rear, you have your USB port. Not quite sure what that's used for. Uh, this would be the six volt DC power. And if you open up, the console, you have on this side the aforementioned RFID scanner 
in the CD tray. As far as the build quality is concerned, it has a little bit of weight to it, but not all that much. It's kind of clunky and squeaky when you close it. shows the fingerprints very easily. Uh, it's not like the greatest plastic, and it just feels like with minimal force, you could probably snap it in half. And it's not the greatest design. It doesn't lay completely flat. It just doesn't seem like it's meant to be in any particular position on a flat surface. And when you open it up, it's, it's really un, not level. It, it's relatively cheaply made. But again, this is more a toy than it is a true video game console. At least that's how I'm looking at it. But that's it as far as this thing is concerned. Here's a look at one of the controllers. This is actually probably more cheaply made than the console. The buttons are real mushy, uh, especially these. Uh, they're almost sticky, and I'm sure it's not from overuse because, I mean, let's be honest, nobody was playing the crap out of this system, which I guess that's why they put it up for sale. Uh, the analog stick is probably the best quality thing about this entire console. Not that it's great, but as far as uh, the rest of the controller, this is probably the only positive. Uh, if you listen to it, it's, it's very noisy and wiggly and just not put together well. Again, the plastic is real cheap. It, I feel like... Again, with minimal force, you could probably snap this in half as well. These uh, shoulder buttons are absolutely terrible. And ch cheap, clear plastic, very noisy, and very, very thin as far as the plastic is concerned. Again, noisy. You have two trigger buttons as well, made out of the same garbage plastic as this. And they're actually not positioned well. I don't know if you could see it, but if they were angled like the black portion of the controller, it probably wouldn't be as bad. But when you're holding it, it just doesn't feel comfortable at all. And you're in a real weird position with the fingers to, to hit those buttons. Again, very, very poorly designed, like much of the system. Here's a look at one of the RFID cards, some of which I believe came with the game packs when you initially purchased them, the rest being available as a separate purchase in what they call booster packs. And as we mentioned before, what they do is they enhance your gameplay in ways I think vary from game to game. And as we said before, all you do is scan it on here. To be fair, this scanner isn't very good you're constantly trying to wave it in front of it flipping it around tapping it just to try and get it to register some i believe didn't register at all but it it took a while and you either scan it before or during the gameplay and it's supposed to help somehow and as far as the quality of the cards are concerned they're actually pretty rigid i believe it's plastic in the middle sandwich between two stickers it's probably the best quality item for this whole console and as an example this being one of the x-men cards here's what it does it says boost the power of your attack with the combo of slashing strikes and as another example here is iceman it says he has good speed and defensive abilities but his encasement attack and freezes opponents in their tracks. So again, it varies as far as how it increases your abilities. But that is our look at the console and everything that comes with it. I only have three games, uh, that of which are the X-Men game, Ben 10, and the IWL. 
uh, interstellar wrestling league game. Uh, there are two others, uh, one of them being the Marvel superheroes and off the top of my head, I can't remember what the other one is. I don't have those, so we won't obviously play them, but the footage of, of those games were in the little history video that are in this, uh, episode. So without further ado, let's connect this to the, uh, TV, play a couple games and we'll see how much of a steaming pile of crap this is. All right, when you turn it on, this is the screen that you are greeted with. And why don't we start off with the Interstellar Wrestling League and see what this game is like. So while we're waiting for this to load, which is taking an awful long time, this being one of the criticisms of the system, I probably should have mentioned it in the beginning when we were first looking at the console, but this doesn't have an HDMI connection. It actually utilizes the old school, uh, you know, AV cables. So it's not the greatest of images, but you know, that that's what we had at the time. All right, after more loading time, here would be the menu for the game. You have tour mode, single game, two player training, card view, options, help. Uh, what does card view do? Oh, great, more loading. Oh, I guess this is where I scan it. Let's see, let's get a card here and put it on there, see if it does anything. Oh, it does. So we got a character card for this fella here, Ultimate Can Meet. It basically shows some information on the character, I guess. Oh, let's let's scan another one. Let's see what this does. So far nothing. Still waiting. Rubbing it, tapping it. Flipping it over. It does nothing. Let's try another one. Oh, 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 there we go. It took a while. Acme special delivery. Drop an anvil on your opponent. Interesting. So let's just go back somehow and start something up. Oh. Thank God. All right, let's pause while we load another one here. More big time All right, that took about a minute and a half to load. Who's wrestling today? Well, let me tell you. He's a dog dressed as a pirate lady. Get it? Growler, not right, pirate. Okay. Round one, wrestle. Ow. Ow. I'm going to try and to figure out if there's any special moves. And graphically, it's a little pixelated, I guess you could say. The animation's a little bit choppy, but I mean, it's not horrible. I think did something. Oh. 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 I have no idea what's going on here. I don't know what this is. A scan battle mod? This is stupid. Okay, we're going to take a look at the game Ben 10. And we're going to wait for this thing to load. This is just to load the initial screen. There's so much loading just to get into a game. And let's just get past all of it so you don't have to suffer through it like I do. Oh, never mind. Here's another loading screen. All right, we have robot attack. Let's click that, see what happens. Oh, another loading screen. Ben, don't oh, it's about time. 
without thinking first. That was the longest Their load long time. That was probably about two minutes. And pitch you could fall into. Check out the shack when you get to it. So far, nothing. So let's just not do that. I don't know what's going on. Oh, is that doing something? I don't know what that was. Let's try something else. How about... Uh, hang on. Alright, that did something. Uh, sort of. It registered. It is an ultimate thing. Oh, that's cool. It, you change characters. Okay. That's interesting, I guess. Scan my card. I don't want to scan your card. It was already hard enough doing what I was doing. Can I pick this up? Oh, yeah. Right, that's the jump button. Alright. Haven't gone through all that again. Let's see how it's... Scan my card yeah. again. It's not very responsive. So there's input lag with the controller as well. So I'll hit the button, and then he jumps. So button, jump. If you can hear me clicking it. So that's not good if you want to have responsive um, gameplay. All right, let's get a running start. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I'm not liking this game. It's not. The controller doesn't work very well. All right. We're going to try and play X Men, see how this thing goes. All right. Let's just do a quick fight. And loading time again. That didn't seem too bad. All right, what do we have? Scan your character card. So I am picking Wolverine. Scan. It worked. Excellent. All right, here we go. Was fun. Actually, did something. Okay, team, remember your training. I'm remembering it. Are actually special moves. So you can have different attacks. I'm going to end it. Let's see, what do you do for that? This? Next time, I won't oh, be right. so gentle. I don't know. Oh, more low time. Uh, you know, that's going to be it for this. Uh, I have to say that this game, as quick as it went, uh, is probably the best one of the three that I have. Uh, it's, the animation looks good. It's not overly pixelated compared to the others. So... This game isn't actually that bad, and I think uh, if I ever play this again, the only thing that'll tempt me to actually play it is this game. So that'll do it for this video, and let's wrap it up. Well, that was our look at the Mattel Hyperscan. Um, as we said when we looked at it, it's not built very well. It's cheap in so many aspects. Uh, it, it couldn't compete with Sony and, and uh, Microsoft with the systems that were out there. Even the Nintendo DS was far superior to this. The Dreamcast, which came out years before, was far superior to this. So that's why they marketed it towards younger kids between the ages of 8 and 14. 
And it, because of that, they made it more like a toy than anything. But what they didn't take into consideration is that demographic were way more advanced than what they uh, assumed. And uh, even though they had uh, pretty good uh, IP choices, being the Marvel characters, which they probably got for a song and a dance, because back in those days, Marvel was selling their IP to whoever for a minimal amount of cash in order to save the company from going under. But even with all that, this was just a terrible idea. It had a good concept, but you can't base a, an entire system on this concept. So when Skylanders and Disney Infinity and the N Nintendo Amiibo came out, it was just a peripheral game and accessories that could be purchased for the system. But the entire system didn't revolve around it. So I think that's where this failed. And any ideas that those companies got from this, if by any chance they did, they just did it better than this. Um, now, I, I didn't get it for a lot of money. I think I only got it for like 40 or $50. I don't even remember. Uh, but it really wasn't even worth it then. If you want to add this to your collection, you can find it on eBay. I think I even got this on Goodwill. Uh, it's not expensive because there's no demand for it like any other uh, retro consoles of the past that are really up there in price. This isn't one of them. Uh, so if you just want to get it to, to put it in amongst your collection, you know, having something that not many people have, then sure, it's great for that. But to actually own it, to play the games on it, uh, don't even bother. I'm probably never going to play this thing again. Anyhow, that was our look at the system. Uh, please like and subscribe and comment, and we'll catch you in the next video.